Hey folks, welcome back to the kitchen here at Mark Kelly Farm. We're going to do something special for dinner tonight because it's a cold evening. We're expecting some snow tonight, so I want a warm meal. So we're going to make some clam chowder. So not just any clam chowder. Stick around, we'll tell you what clam chowder we're making. So back when we lived in California, every try to do every year, we would go to a coastal community called Pismo Beach, California. Uh, a lot of folks called it Portuguese Palm Springs because lots of Portuguese people go there and they ride quads out in the sand dunes and hang out there during the summer. But there's a little cafe in downtown Pismo on the main strip on the way down to the beach. It's called Splash Cafe. They have the most amazing clam chowder you've ever tasted in your life. And we have literally driven to Pismo, which was about three and a half hours, just to go eat there in Pismo and get that uh, Splash Cafe clam chowder. Of course, there was another restaurant we would go to as well, but that was a big part of the trip. So over the years, I've tried to duplicate that recipe, and I think I've got pretty close. So let's make it. So in our big heavy bottom pot, we have 16 ounces of potatoes. And I've used a small yellow, uh, like a Yukon gold potato, because I like leaving the skins on. If you use a russet, obviously peel those russets because the skins are a lot dirtier. So one pound of potatoes, we've uh, pretty much quartered those little potatoes. And we've cooked them until they're fork tender. And now we're going to drain them and set them aside. We do not need to reserve any of this cooking liquid. Okay, now in our same heavy bottom pot, we're melting three quarters of a cube of butter, or three ounces. And that once that gets melted, we are going to add in here six ounces of chopped up bacon. Uh, bacon is uncooked. We're going to cook it in this pot. Butter's melted. We added our uh, six ounces of bacon. So now we're also going to add one large onion chopped, two stalks of celery chopped, and one leek kind of chopped real fine. Cut it long ways and then uh, chop it up real good. If you don't have a leek, use six to eight uh, green onion scallions. Would be a good substitution. Scallions, I should say. So we're going to keep this stirred up and we're going to get this cooking down. Now when people find out you're cooking bacon in butter, they're going to think you're way out in the rhubarb after that. Got everything cooking. We're cooking on high. And we're going to cook this down to the bacon's cooked all the way through. And the vegetables have softened up quite a bit. If you'd rather have a browner bacon, you can do your bacon first. And then don't drain it. Throw your butter in there, kind of deglaze the pan with the butter, and then throw your veggies in if you'd rather have a more a color uh, on your bacon. So we'll come back when it's time to throw in the next ingredients. Now for our clams, we're using two 10-ounce cans of baby clams, whole baby clams. Because faith it, folks, not all of us live by the ocean. But if you're going to use fresh clams, use enough clams to where you're going to get about... Uh, probably 10 ounces of clam meat and about another 10 ounces you want to save of the clam liquor after you get done steaming open the clams and cooking them. Save about 10 ounces of the clam juice as well. Now Pismo is famous for the Pismo clam and for a lot of years you could go harvest those clams during clam season, go out on the beach and dig them and clam but then they shut it down for a long time. They reopened it briefly. In fact, we went there as a family trip and did some clamming, but then they closed it again because I guess the clam again got endangered or whatever. And to my knowledge, you still can't harvest Pismo clams there on the beach. So I doubt that Splash Cafe is actually using Pismo clams. And I don't know whether they boil their own clams down or if they use a uh, commercial clam product that they buy. 
So as you can see, what we've done is we've separated the clams from the clam juice. We strain these cans out into here because we're going to be adding these at different intervals. So separate, keep it separated. Everything's cooking down real nice. The vegetables have gotten really soft and they're almost mush when you touch them. That's what you want. And the, onion, the uh, bacon's getting a little bit of color on it. And you can smell the aroma coming out of the pot is no longer that pungent onion smell. Uh, it's a lot sweeter now. So the next few steps are going to go fairly quickly. So we're going to add a quarter cup of flour at this point. And this is really going to soak up all that oil and that's what we want. We want to cook this flour. Stir it until you really can't see the flour anymore. It kind of disappears into the mix. And then let it cook just for a little bit. Put a little flavor into that roux. You don't want to cook it too long to where it turns the flour brown. I would say maybe 45 seconds or so would be good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dump in all of our clam juice. And that's going to thicken really quick. And it's going to deglaze the bottom of that pan, anything that started sticking. So when this starts getting thick, we're going to add our next ingredients that are mixed together. There's uh, 32 ounces of whole milk and 16 ounces of heavy cream in that uh, little measuring, big measuring cup there. So you see we're nice and thick now. So let's dump in our cream and our milk. Do the whole thing. And then we're going to get stirring that again. Make sure everything's loosened up off the bottom. That's why I like using one of these flat bottom spoons like this. And then once you feel that nothing's sticking to the bottom, then we're going to go ahead and add our potatoes back to the party. Oops. Little splash there. Looks like I'm cleaning the floor later. And then we're going to bring that up to a simmer. Mmm, looking good. Smelling good too. Uh, we're also going to throw in our bay leaves. We have two bay leaves right here. Add those to the party. Get some flavor coming out of those. All right, we'll stir this quite often because we don't want this to scorch or burn. We're still on high, but as soon as we come up to a simmer, we're going to drop the fire to low. Now you always hear me preach about cooking in a heavy bottom pan. They are a must to distribute the heat because if you have a real light pan like a stock pot, the heat comes through real hard and you're going to get a scorched area right over the burner and then your food's going to taste burnt. So unless you're cooking just stock or something like that, if you're cooking beans or any kind of soup, make sure you're in a good, nice, heavy bottom pot. Now if you don't have one, if you have a really big like 12 inch cast iron skillet, you can put that skillet down on the burner and put your pot in that skillet if it'll fit. And that'll act as a heat diffuser where you won't get that scorched bottom. Now, once this boils, comes to a simmer, this is as thick as it will get at this point. Now, if you want a little thicker consistency chowder, just continue to simmer it, continue to stir quite frequently. And once those potatoes start breaking down, your chowder will get thicker and thicker and thicker and you can cook it to whatever consistency you want. We're up to a simmer. You can see it simmering and you can see that we've got thicker, considerably thicker. So we're going to simmer this for about 15 to 20 minutes and you're going to stir it frequently and again make sure you have a, either a flat bottom spoon like that where you can scrape the bottom really good. You don't want anything sticking to the bottom. If you don't have that, maybe use like a heat proof spatula. My youngest daughter Sam turned me on to these. 
it keep that bottom clean and let this simmer now when you get clam chowder at splash cafe it's almost as thick as like gravy like breakfast gravy and i think that is because they no longer cook it right there at the facility i think they cook it at another location and they bring it there in bulk and reheat it and if you've ever like made like gravy or something like that and let it get cold and then reheat it you'll notice it's a lot thicker and i think that's what's going on i think i saw when i was there last time that they were dumping a big container of it in there rewarming it so uh the restaurant is also open for breakfast and I always thought, man, if they served that clam chowder over warm biscuits, I would be in heaven. That would be a, a fantastic breakfast for me. It may sound weird to you, but that would be over the top. Now, I highly recommend that you cook this a day ahead and then cool it down overnight. Cool it down quickly. You don't want to stay between that temperature of about 140 and 7 degree, 70 degrees very long. Cool it down quick. Uh, put a bag of ice cubes in it once it cools down a little bit you want to get it really cold quick and then put it in the fridge and then warm it in a pan the next day don't do it in the microwave rewarm it in the pan and those flavors will come together and it'll be a lot better uh, clam chowder if it's set just like anything that sets for a day if you eat it the next day the leftovers always taste better now you can get Splash Cafe clam chowder shipped to you. They have an online store and they will ship it to you frozen and it'll get to your house frozen. You can put it in the freezer and just pull a package out as you need it. I think there was three or four packages in the box that we purchased and you can get that experience no matter where you're at, probably here in the continental United States. If you don't want to cook this stuff, you can order it up from them. All right, we've simmered our uh, chowder for about 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and add all of our clams. We don't want our clams overcooked. That's one of the last things you add in. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And if you don't know how to get an eighth of a teaspoon, just use a quarter teaspoon and only use half of it. But anything with it's got cream in it, nutmeg really puts it over the top. It's just a little hint in there. So if you're ever cooking anything with cream or whipped cream or heavy cream, try a little bit of nutmeg in it, a little dash of nutmeg. All right, we're going to let this come together. We're going to bring it back to a simmer after putting those clams in. And then we're going to shut her down. You can see it's getting pretty thick. And that's what we're looking for. And then right before serving, we'll pull out these bay leaves. And we've got some more tricks up our sleeve, folks. Don't go away yet. Kelly is cutting up some of her homemade sourdough bread to go with our clam chowder. And that brings us to another topic. So Splash Cafe clam chowder is famous for being served in a little sourdough bread uh, bowl. They take a little round sourdough bread loaf and they carve the inside of it out. They take that part and then they toast it. I think probably with some butter on it on the grill. And then they pour your clam chowder in that sourdough bowl. Uh, it's a really good way to eat it. However, I think you get more bang for your buck if you order your clam chowder in a container. You're going to get more clam chowder like you and your significant other each order some clam chowder and then just buy one of those little uh, round bread rolls and you guys can split the bread. It's the perfect amount for that amount of chowder and you don't end up with a big bunch of bread that you're not going to eat if you both of you, both of you order it in a bowl. It works a lot better that way. It's still way better in the bowl. Yeah. Kelly likes it better in the bowl. But... I'm going to give you another hack too, and if the locals know I gave you this hack, they're going to meet me at the county line and not allow me back into Pismo. So you'll notice if you ever go to Pismo that the line at Splash Cafe is very commonly down the block. So it takes a while, like an hour, to get up to the counter to order. 
there's a way around that. Know what you want, go online, look at their menu, and order on the phone. Your order will be ready in about 15 to 20 minutes, and you don't have to wait in that line. You go in the side door around the right-hand side of the building. You can walk up to the side counter in there, get your clam chowder or whatever you ordered, and pay and leave. And I say leave because you have to leave. If you do an order out, you cannot sit in the restaurant, any of their tables, any of that. You must leave. But we always just eat our clam chowder on the hood of the pickup and fine with us. But again, that's a locals hack and the locals would hunt me down and kill me if they knew I told you that. All right, we've simmered a little bit and we've turned the heat off. You can see it's thickened uh, quite a bit. It's fine for my liking and it's going to get thicker as it cools a little bit. You don't want to eat it right now because it's like hot as the surface of the sun. But you can see if you've ever been to Splash Cafe that this clam chowder, you can see a lot more going on in here. And that's because I don't chop my bacon up very fine. I like it a little more rustic. And then uh, the potatoes are probably a little bigger than what you'll find in Splash Cafe. But it's all about the flavor. We've removed the bay leaves. Kelly's going to toast our sourdough bread. And we'll show you how to serve this, which is another must-do trick. All right, we have tasted it and adjusted it for salt. Uh, you always want to do that at the end because you never know how much salt the bacon's going to have in it or the crab or anything else. So always adjust it at the end. I added probably another half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, if you're going to use saltine crackers or these oyster crackers, which is one of my favorites if I don't have this fantastic sourdough bread, you have to allow for that because those are going to add salt to the mix. So let's show you how to plate this up. So what you're going to do, uh, Splash Cafe offers a option to add some crab meat to the top of your clam chowder. And I highly recommend do not skip that option because it really sends it over the top. And theirs is going to be a little more lump than mine because mine's coming out of a can. And then a little bit of fresh parsley like that. And then I like spicing it up a little bit so I use my Creole seasoning that I like. You could also use hot sauce. But if you want the true experience, leave it out and eat it as is. But we're going to put a little bit of this on top to spice mine up a little bit. Now they have Tabasco and such there at the cafe. Look at that. We'll add us a little piece of crusty bread on there. That's a meal fit for a king right there. Now I've been getting yelled at a lot for not including the written recipes on these things. So uh, I'm going to screenshot the recipe and I'm going to flash it on the screen here next so you can pause the video, screenshot it, do whatever you need to do, write it down. Here it is. All right, folks, that's as close as I can get you to the authentic Splash Cafe clam chowder. I think that's the closest guarded secret in Southern California. That recipe has never got out. And uh, I think that's probably why they don't make it in the store because they don't want everybody to know every ingredient in that. But uh, I've got a pretty good palate and, and uh, I can taste kind of what's in there. So we hope you try this recipe. If uh, you don't like it, you can always order the original stuff online. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. We're going to have dinner. Catch you on the next video.